Hey, it's Bethany and Justin from the Flack Fam, and today we are visiting a place that should be an item on everyone's bucket list. Agreed. We're talking about one of Antony Gaudi's most famous creations. Not Park Guell, not Casa Calvet, not the Rosary of Montserrat. Nope. We're talking about his still unfinished masterpiece, Sagrada Familia. For those of you asking, who is Antoni Gaudi? Or Sagrada, what? You're not alone. I had seen a picture of the cathedral, but I hadn't connected it to its designer until we started talking about spending time in Spain. Admittedly, Justin did shame me a bit, but I got over it. Since there are many of you who may not know, Antoni Gaudi was a Catalan architect and designer from Spain known as the greatest exponent of Catalan modernism. Most of his designs are located in Barcelona, including Park Güell and his lives masterpiece, the Church of Sagrada Familia. The church was started in 1882 by Francisco de Paula del Viar, but the design was very traditional neo-Gothic instead of what you see today. Well, you can thank Gaudi for that. He took over the project in 1883 and applied his Catalan modernistic eye, along with some of his signature elements, to the project. Gaudi tragically died in 1926 and did not get to see the completion of his masterpiece. In fact, the church is still in progress of being built. So when you visit, you'll see a lot of cranes and construction equipment around the outside of the building. But even with all of that, it is still peaceful and breathtaking. We purchased an audio tour that was self-led on the official app, and it was a huge help. We started our tour at the Nativity facade. This facade was dedicated to the birth of Jesus Christ, and the scenes here tell that story. There is so much to unpack behind the meaning of each element of the design that we could do an entire docu-series on it. I'm sure there already is one, if not many of them. True. The intricate detail in this facade is almost overwhelming, from the environmental elements to the figures all involved in the story of the birth of Christ. There's a lot to see here. As you enter through this facade, your eyes are immediately captivated by the rainbows of light rays that are scattered in every direction, thanks to all of the stained glass windows that make up so much of the upper levels of this church. The cathedral is laid out in a traditional Latin cross fashion, and suspended in the middle of the church you'll see Christ on the crucifix. Only it's slightly different than what you might be used to seeing in a church. The vibrancy due to the lighting and color brings it to life. Trying to take in this whole space all at once is impossible because there is so much to see. Thank goodness we were taking the audio tour because I would probably just have wandered without purpose. Truth is, I still probably did. We did pay extra to climb one of the towers, which was breathtaking. You take an elevator almost all the way to the top, then you exit into a narrow passageway with a lot of other people. You climb a narrow spiral staircase that has windows every few steps with amazing views of the rest of the church, as well as of Barcelona. From this vantage point, you could really see the beauty and color of the Trencar mosaics that cover the upper levels of the structure. At one point, we left the tower we were in and exited onto a bridge that led to another tower. This gave us even better views of the city below. We will give you one word of caution. If you are afraid of heights or of confined spaces, you should probably skip climbing the towers. Yeah, the way up was one thing, but the way back down could be very intimidating to some. It was to one of our daughters. The tower we went back down through has a spiral staircase with no center wall, so you can look straight down to the ground level. Um, if you want to look down the middle, it's kind of cool. Oh, that gives my, that gives me the... Yeah, it made for beautiful pictures, but it could be panic-inducing for sure. It doesn't feel real. We said there were a lot of people, but that doesn't describe it. It was a bit chaotic because of the number of people touring, but on top of that, there were people there worshipping, which made things a bit awkward as we toured and took pictures. Yeah, it felt bad walking around as others were here for a different purpose or for a more spiritual experience. They do hold church services here. In fact, there was a service taking place in the chapel in the lower level of the basilica, which you can look down into when you walk behind the altar of the main chapel. We worked our way around the inside of the church to the exit on the other side, which takes you out to the Passion Facade, which is a depiction of Christ's passion, his death, and his resurrection. 
The sculptures on this facade are very angular and depict an emotion of sorrow and grief. Gaudi himself makes an appearance here among the figures mourning and worshipping. After taking in as much as we could here, we headed into the Sacrada Familia Museum, which took you from the conception of the church through each phase of its construction, and of course leads you right to a souvenir shop. This shop, however, was amazing. Probably because the church was amazing, but we ended up purchasing quite a bit here, including drawings and a stone statue of Gaudi from the Passion Facade. We've been to a lot of historical places, visited a lot of museums, but Sagrada Familia left a lasting impression on us, and we really hope we can return as more is completed. The next major phase will be the glory facade, which will be dedicated to the glorious nature of Christ even after his death. We cannot recommend visiting Sagrada Familia enough. It is one of the most beautiful and awe-inspiring examples of one artist's vision that we've ever seen. So the next time you find yourself in Barcelona, or anywhere in Spain for that matter, we totally recommend making the trip. While you're there, allow yourself some additional time to visit some of Gaudi's other creations. We promise you won't be disappointed. We hope you enjoyed joining us as we reminisced about Sagrada Familia. Before you go, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave us a comment. We like hearing from you. Bye!